Hello everyone! In this video we will look at exercise 5 from chapter 2 of Chemical Applications of Group Theory by Cotton. I am making this video because I found small errors in the solution manual. The major one is that although the question specifies CA equals AC and BC equals CB, the author forgets about these constraints and doesn't use them in the solution. So for the time being I will omit these constraints and I will address them at the end of the video. Also, the question is formulated in a very casual way. So, for instance, what multiplication table do we end up with actually means give me a Cayley table for the smallest group that satisfies the conditions in the question. Lastly, please be aware that I'll be using some information from the previous video. The link is in the description. Also, in the description you will find the link to the slides. The key to the answer is that if we take G3 and add one element, we cannot get G4 because G3 can't be a subgroup of G4. The smallest group that can have subgroup G3 is G6. That just comes from Lagrange theory. It states that the order of the subgroup must be a divider of the order of the group. And if you remember, the order of the group is just equal to the number of elements in the group. I already mentioned Lagrange theory in one of my videos, the link is in the description. So here is our Cayley table for G6. These entries we already know. The nine entries in the corner come from G3 and there is only one G3 group and it is cyclic. We have A, A times A is B, A times A times A is BA or AB which is equal to E. A four times is A and so the cycle repeats. Please notice the convention we are using. In this video AB means multiply column A by row B. The second convention is that the multiplication is from left to right. There are books where it is on the other way around with analogy to function composition. So anyway, let's choose CA equals D and CB equals F. Let's look at CA equals D first. We can write multiply by B. Why? Because AB is equal to E, the identity element. And so C equals to DB. We are just taking advantage of the fact that any group must obey the associative law. So anyhow, now we are only one element away from solving the B row. We know that no two elements can repeat in any row or column, so FB must be equal to D. And then we do the same for A row. Now it's the time to think about the remaining entries on the diagonal. So let's analyze our table. CDF cannot be on the diagonal since all permutations of CDF are already used in the upper rows. Please remember what we said in the last video. If an element X is an inverse to an element Z, then an element Z is an inverse to an element X. So there must be an even number of elements that are inverses to each other. And for G6 that means there must be an even number of elements that are inverses to itself. That is, even number of E elements on a diagonal. For us that means 2 or 4 identity elements on the diagonal. So first, let's fill in the diagonal with 3 identity elements. From the fact that CC equals E and so DD and FF, we can easily solve this area. The reason why I write multiply by A is because the A row is already solved. Uh, so let's finish the F row and then let's use it together with the relationship AA equals B to solve the last square. This is obviously one of many ways in which we can reach the same pattern in the table. What can we say about this group? Well, if you watched my last video, you would know that we can come up with at least two distinct groups if the number of elements is even and greater than two. Cyclic and dihedral group. In fact, for six elements, there are the only two possibilities. Even if you forgot that, what you know about our group is that it has cyclic subgroup C3 and three more elements that are their own inverses. These three elements could be interpreted as reflections, as doing a reflection twice takes you back to where you started. So reflections are their own inverses. These clues lead to a conclusion that this table is for D3. One more important thing, the hydro groups are not abelian, because reflections and rotations do not commute, and we see that in a Cayley table. It is not symmetrical across the diagonal. Now let's look at the case when there is only one E on a diagonal. So let's take DD equals E. Equally well, we could have chosen CC or FF equals E, but let's stick to DD equals E. 
now we are able to solve the entire column. Then notice that we agreed that no more e's can be on the diagonal, that means cc equals a and ff equals b, and now we have completed this part of the table. Using the relationships from the diagonal, now we are able to solve for more entries. We can take for instance ff equal b and solve for another row and take cc equals a and solve for another column and we are done. This time the table represents a group that is symmetrical across the diagonal, that is the group is a billion. It has two identity elements and so we can say with confidence is C6. Now you should be able to see their relationships even more clearly. It is possible to choose the elements so that the C3 subgroup is made of R squared, R to the power of 4 and R to the power of 6, that is 1. Then if we add an element like R, that will generate the remaining elements of group C6. This is in contrast with what Cotton says in the manual. He writes that C, D and F must give rise to three subgroups of order 2, since a single new subgroup of order 4 is impossible. It is true that a new subgroup of order 4 is impossible, but to my mind it does not imply that C, D and F must have order 2. In fact, C and F, as you can see, can have order 6. And in case you forgot, order of an element x is the smallest positive integer m such that x to the power of m equals e, where e is the identity element. So I don't think that the solution is right, because to my mind the question is not of a type for all, but there exists. And we found elements that would make it work for C6. Lastly, please notice that although we didn't intend to do so, we actually addressed the part of the question which says which commutes with both A and B. Just a quick note, it is of course impossible to construct a symmetric table with four identity elements on the diagonal. Also notice that for C6, or any group of that matter, we can have different mappings and the Cayley table might look different, but it should maintain its overall symmetry properties. That is, if the group is abelian, all mappings of the group will be abelian and the table will be symmetric across a diagonal. Analogically, if a group is non-abelian, all the different mappings will be asymmetric across the diagonal. We have example of this here. This table is for D3 that we have derived earlier in the video. The exact same table is in the solution manual. This is another table for D3 that Cotton gives in the textbook. He comments in the solution manual that these two tables are the same, that is isomorphic, only the mapping is different. Please notice that they are both asymmetric across the diagonal. The last thing I want to point out is a small typo. Either D is mapped onto A and F onto B, or the other way around, but you cannot map two elements onto the same element. So that's all I have for you today, I hope it helps, bye!